Hey everybody, welcome to chapter 14 from We Lock Light and Grammar. Today we're going to take a look at I stem nouns, the third declension, ablative of means, accompaniment, and manner. So we're, we're going to be introduced to a new type of third declension nouns called the I stem. Third declension nouns that we've seen before, like the ones from chapter 7, from here on out we'll call those consonant stem nouns. So the good news is with the I stems is they look almost identical. Uh, except the genitive plural ends in I U M. Neuters have I instead of E in the ablative singular. And they also have I A instead of just A in the plural, in the nominative, accusative, and vocative. So let's look at some examples here real quick, and we'll talk about them here for a little bit. The consonant stems we've seen before, like Rex Regis. Then we have three different categories of third declension I stems with the parasyllabics, the base and two consonants, and the neuters ending in E, A, L, and A, R. So let's look at an example of each one of these. So parasyllabic. Nominative and genitive had the same number of syllables. That's really all that means. Like kiwis, kiwis, citizen. So if we fully decline that, we'd get kiwis, kiwis, kiwi, kiwem, Kiway. In the plural, kiways, kiwium, so there's that one difference. Kiwibus, kiways, kiwibus. So we'll notice the same thing in this other example. We have nubes, nubis. Nubes, nubis, nubi, nubem, nube. Just like we would have expected. And in the plural, nubes, nubium, nube, nubibus, nubes, nubibus. So in the genitive plural, we have that extra i. The next type are the base and two consonants. So just like the name says, when you take off the genitive ending, you get two consonants at the end of the base form. Like orbs, orbis, orbi, orbem, orbe. In the plural, orbase, orbium. So there's that I-U-M again. Orbibus, orbase, orbibus. So again, not much different. Luckily, third declensions. Uh, whether they're consonant or I stems look fairly similar, just uh, a couple of extra endings to memorize. Let's look at these neuters where the nominative ends in E, A, L, and A, R. Like mare. So mare, maris. That's neuter, so it'll have the neuter rule where the nominative and the accusative and the vocative are going to look the same. So mare, maris, and dative singular mari. An accusative mare, so remember neuter rule applies, and then the ablative, here's a difference, mari with an i. Then the plural maria, marium, maribus, maria, maribus. So you'll notice really with the neuters here we do have a, a couple of exceptions. We also have that ium in the plural, but we also have the ia in the plural, or before we just had an i. And then the uh, in the singular, in the ablative, we have an I instead of an E. So all those that have endings in either E, A, L, or A, R, that are third declension, that'll apply. Then we have irregulars, like this one here, weis, weis, which means force or strength. Now this is best just memorized. Uh, weis, weis, we, whim, we, in the plural, we raise. Wearium, weariboos, weirades, weariboos. So again, it is a third declension I stem, but it's easier just to memorize that one. So let's look at those two classes again, and or three different classes of I stems, and think about it. So remember the first type; they could be either masculine or feminine, with a nominative singular in is. That's what shows that it's third declension. Uh, they can also have es. And they have the same number of syllables in the nominative and the genitive. So those are parasyllabic. So their genitive singular can either end in is or es. So some examples here. Hostis, hostis. In the plural, of course, we get hostium. So there's that one big difference. And that means enemy. So kind of interestingly, the word we get for uh, hostile and uh, hospitable and hospital all come from this. 
Then we have Nawi Snowies. So both of those end in IS. And the plural, of course, would be Nami, uh, Nawium for genitive plural. So that's a ship. Uh, another example, Moles, Molis. So there's that ES ending. Genitive plural, the Noium master structure. So keep in mind for all third declensions, though, uh, the nominative can have all kinds of forms. So the genitive always ends in ES. So go back and correct myself there. Uh, genitive singular always ends in IS. In some cases, for these uh, irregular I stems, the nominative singular can end in ES or IS. So here's that other group, masculine and feminine, with a nominative singular ending in either S or X, but most importantly, the base has two consonants. So R's are T's. So if we drop the IS to get the base, we have RT. So there's our two consonants. Genitive plural, RTM, art or skill. So other than that, genitive plural declines just like a regular third declension. Same thing with these other examples, dens, dentis. Genitive plural will be dentium in these two. Nox, noctis, noctium in the genitive plural, night. Uh, then erps, erbis. So you're supposed to actually pronounce that like a PS. Uh, I almost always pronounce it wrong, but do the best you can on that. Erps, erbis. And the uh, genitive plural, erbium, which means city, is where we get our word urban from. So we have those two examples so far. So we have the masculine and feminine, um, the par so-called parasyllabics, then the base and two consonants. And then last but not least, neuter, with the nominative singular ending in A, A L, A R, or E. Generative plural would be uh, an I U M. So let's look at some examples. So we have animal, animalis. So it's just that's an easy one to remember because that's exactly where we get our word animal from. Exemplar, exemplaris, and mare, maris. So these would decline just like we saw on that chart. So they'd have a few exceptions because they're neutered. So ablative singular ends at I, not E. And in the plural, we have the I all the way through. So I, A, I, U, M, Ibus, I, A, Ibus. So the I stem are actually fairly easy to form because of that. Then there's that irregular that we had. So we had we, 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 wim, we. Then the plural we race, we reum, we reboost, we race, we reboost. And yeah, it's just best to just memorize that thing. So ablatives. So, so far we've just been kind of winging it as we go through. Uh, translating is by, with, or from, or if it has an ablative, we just translate it as the preposition plus the ablative. So, so far, ablatives have been objects of prepositions. So, there are some specialized uses for ablative, like the ablative of means or instrument. And those, ans those type of ablatives answer the question by means of what or with what. And with those, we have no prepositions. So, for example, Lateros stilo scripsit. So he wrote the letter, but how did he do it? With a pen, stilo. So we don't need a preposition there. We have to add one when we translate it. But it answers that question, you know, by what means or instrument did the subject of this verb do this work? So he wrote the letter with the pen. So we probably could have translated that without knowing exactly what it was, but just do keep in mind uh, these ablatives do have specialized uses. Same thing as we have here with ablative of accompaniment. So in whose company or you know, with whom. This one we always have the ablative case with the preposition cum, C-U-M. Uh, like magna cum laude and those kind of things. So some examples, cum amicis venerunt they came with friends. So who accompanied them? Their friends did. Another example would be an ablative of manner, which would answer the question how or in what manner. We would also use ablative plus cum. Um, cum celeritate winnerunt. They came with speed. 
So again, that's the speed's not coming with them, so it's not accompaniment. It's manner. So in what manner did they do this? Again, translation would be the same. It's just uh, a grammatical difference between the two. So each of these special uses can be translated using the English preposition with. So notice on all those, either with or without a preposition, we can translate it as with. It's just the specific usages are a little bit different. But they all tell us something about the action of the verb. You know, they answer questions like with whom, in what manner, what means, with what instrument. So it just helps describe what's going on a little bit better. Let's go ahead and look at the vocabulary here in chapter 14. So we have animal, animalis, which is just an animal or living creature. Aqua, aquae, water. Ars, artis, so art or skill. Auris, auris, which means ear. Uh, don't be, don't confuse that with the one that sounds very similar, which means gold, aura. So auris, auris would be like ear. And kiwis, kiwis, kiwis is a citizen. It can be either masculine or feminine, depending on the uh, circumstance. And use yuris, so that's a right or justice or law. So we get all those J words from it, jurisdu uh, jurisdiction, jurisprudence, jury, and all those things. Just, injury. Mare, maris. So it means C. Mors, mortis, death. Nubes, nubis. So that means a cloud, like a cloud up in the sky. Then os, os oris. So that's a mouth, or it can mean the whole face itself. Pars partis, a part, a share, or a direction. Uh, a super simple one to remember here. Roma, Romai, means the city of Rome. Turba, turbi. That can be an uproar, a disturbance, or a crowd, uh, a multitude. So that's where we get our word uh, you know, to disturb from. So it's like an angry mob. Then there's that one I said I always pronounced wrong. Erps, Erpes, means a city, it's where we get urban from. Then Wies, Wies can mean force, power, or violence. And then the plural means strength. So don't confuse that with weir, even though it looks kind of similar. Now we have a couple of prepositions here. Ah, the four consonants, just like the difference between A and an. So it's either ah or ab. Uh, it takes the ablative case, means away from, from, or by. So very frequently you'll see this compounded with verbs. Another preposition takes the accusative, uh, trons, which means across. Sometimes it's a prefix on the front of verbs. Speaking of verbs, apello, apellare, apellawi, appellatum. To speak to, to address, to call, to name. Kuro, Kurere, Kukuri, Kursum, to run, to rush, to move quickly. So an easy way to remember this is to think of current. So the water is rushing forth quickly. Muto, Mutare, Mutawi, Mutatum, to change, to alter, to exchange. So we get mutate from that. Teneo, Tenere, Tenui, Tensum, to hold, to keep, to possess, or even to restrain. Then wito, witare, witawi, witatum. So this means to avoid or shun something. So don't confuse that with wiwo, uh, which means something totally different. So wito, keep that in mind. Wito, witare, let me turn my other light off here. Witawi, witatum. Okay, let's go through the sentences and we'll wrap this one up. Ex deus aquas maria in principio apelawit. So a nice biblical verse there. Ex Deus aquas maria in principio apelavos. Terra ipsa homines et animalia olem criavos. Pan servat always et magistros fortunatos oium. So in that case, pan is the pan of mythology. Parva formica onera magna ore trachet. 
Auri Boost Teneo Lupum. That's kind of a fun one. Ile Magnum Turbom Clientium Secum Hobbit. Then Hocnemo Quineque Pecunia Superare Futulus. Animus Aes Era Ignaris Artium Malaro. Next one. Magna Parg Mei Mortem Vitabit. Quos Amigidoti Exemplaria Graica Semper Cum Cura Versate. Gives that cum preposition, so keep that in mind when you translate. Non Wiribus et Celeritate Corporum Magna Gerimus. Sed Sapientia et Sententia et Arte. Last but not least. Isti Kylum not animum suum mutant. Si transmare corrupt. So again, a new type of third declension nouns. Not much different than what we've seen before, but these I stems have a few key examples that you need to keep in mind. One more thing before we uh, wrap this one up. There's a nice little uh, couple of sentences here that tell us a little story. It's called Store Teeth. So it's kind of a nice one to look at. Was, even in the ancient world, people's teeth went bad. You know, they, they did brush their teeth, but they didn't have you know, fluoride and the type of toothpaste that we do. So it was kind of a, a social thing to have nice looking teeth. Sometimes you had to buy them. And usually the ones that were bought looked better. So this little poem tells us a story about Somebody who's got some of these fancy store-bought tea. So it says, Tais habet nigros, nueos lacania dentes. Quae ratio est? Emptos haec habet. Ila suos. So look at that one. See if you can figure out what's going on there. So somebody's got store-bought teeth and somebody doesn't. So who do you think's got the best-looking teeth? So next time, when we come back, we'll look at chapter 15 from Wienlux Latin Grammar, and I'll see you soon. Wellette.